Okay, so this is my first look at Sparky Linux, and uh, this is thanks to Count Smacula, uh, who left a comment on my MX Linux video. Uh, unfortunately, it got deleted by YouTube because it had a link in it, but uh, I've, uh, I've got the email, so I basically have clicked on the link, and this is the link that he sent to me. Uh, so hands-on with Sparky Linux 5.14 on the Raspberry Pi 4, and uh, it looks pretty decent. It's it's nice, again, that, that it's a different operating system with a different way of doing various different things, and it, and it does work pretty well. Here you can see a little background about Sparky Linux, which is the latest stable release of this Debian-based distribution. It's a 32-bit operating system, uh, not 64, which is usually better for compatibility, so I haven't got an issue with that. Uh, I do seem to find that the audio uh, works through HDMI um, on Firefox, but doesn't work through the 3.5mm socket, the, the headphone socket on my Pi 4. I'm using a Pi 4 8 gig, uh, but I'm going to install Chromium and have a look at that as well. So if I scroll down... One of the things that was notable on the article was YouTube 1080 Full HD also works well, even without having to enable any hidden options like web render. I haven't found that on this, uh, and uh, by the way, I'll put, I'll, I'll put a link to this article, and uh, this has got a link in it to download Sparky Linux, so the official website, and you can download it and try it out for yourself. Um, but let's just show the YouTube playback. So here's a video I've got queued up, one of mine. Uh, so it's already on 1080. If I hit play and I go to full screen, I find Firefox quite sluggish, actually. Uh, so if I right-click now, and do stats for nerds. You can see it's pausing anyway. Uh, and this is running from an SD card. Here you go, so 303 frames dropped of 600 odd. And it's still dropping frames and it looks jerky. This isn't uncommon and I'm, I'm used to this, but it was just because the comments said it was working well at 1080. Obviously the reviewer found that it was working all right. I haven't overclocked, haven't done anything to it. Let's just have a look at the operating system anyway. Uh, so down the bottom here, you've got your sort of start button. So if I click on that, uh, it's a different take on it and it shows all the apps uh, and they're scrollable with the, well, I'm using a trackpad. Um, but you can see if we go from the top about Sparky Linux, which seems to do something a bit like Neofetch. Uh, the way that it shows the information and everything. So OS version 5.14, uh, it's only recently come out, so 8th of, the, 8th of February, and uh, it's been up for 26 minutes. So if I, well in fact, I've installed Neofetch, um, just because I, I always tend to do that, especially on new operating systems. So you can see it comes up with, with a lot of the same sort of information, the way it presents it and everything. So. Next up, network configuration. Well, the network's worked fine for me. I'm using an Ethernet cable and I haven't got any issue with that. So we've got an audio player there. We've got uh, something to keep it everything up to date. Bulk renaming, a mail app, calculator, firewall, Firefox is the browser. Uh, two file managers there. Uh, Debian package installer. So if you've downloaded a, uh, a program, then you can install it with this because the file manager, well that's file manager preferences, file manager, yeah that's what the file manager looks like. So and you can see I've installed PyApps, PyApps doesn't come installed. I could say that it definitely works, it installed fine. Uh, I couldn't get PyKiss to install, it wouldn't recognize it. Firewall configuration, run command, no uh, media player, screenshot app. So there's quite a few things on here, keyboard and mouse, so so different settings. Uh, I was glad to see that uh, the monitor settings was there so I can very easily change it from 1080 to 720 and I'm on 720 at the moment. It starts off at 1080 uh, and I've tried it at 1080 and the YouTube playback was worse on that as well. Uh, so mouse pad, simple text program, Nitrogen, browse and set desktop background. Oh, that's interesting. Nice to get something really, really straightforward to do that. What have we got? We've got some nice looking backgrounds here. I think that one will probably look quite nice as a desktop. And we've got various preferences here. Full screen, screen one and so on. So let's close that down and well, let's go through them and we'll show the desktop in a minute. Uh, open box configuration, PN mixer, preferred applications. Oh yeah, but that would be good. So if I install Chromium, I want that to be my default uh, application, then I can use that. 
Print settings, I couldn't get it to recognize my printer. QT5 configuration tool. That's nice again, uh, so an easy way to, this was one thing I found about MX Linux, I didn't find very simple, very straightforward ways of customizing. There are, you can obviously do it, but it wasn't laid out for you. So this already, you can change the desktop and you can customize the look and feel very, very simply. So Raspberry Pi configuration, uh, which is nice to see in there because you can do things like remove the black bars if they're there. Boot to desktop, boot to CLI, that's nice to have as an option. Um, this is the same sort of thing you get in Raspberry Pi OS. So Raspberry Pi config is there as a launchable, which is nice as well, nice and easy to get to. Removable drives and media, well I haven't got anything plugged in here at the moment. But this, oh yeah. There's quite a lot of um, very straightforward customizable things in here, which I like the look of. Screensaver, there's some really interesting screensavers. I actually had this on um, in the background. It was I'd started it up and I was doing something else and it was, well, I was watching TV and it, it, in the corner of my eye, it was doing all these weird, weird things. Um, but I quite liked it, some really sort of retro things. You can see loads of them are ticked. So random screensaver. We've got a, a next one here. Yeah, abstract tile, all sorts of weird screen service. It very much reminds me of, of sort of early Windows used to, uh, that would be one of the things you'd customize on like Windows 95 with the bubbles or something like that. Oh, not installed, wow. That's pretty freaky, isn't it? <laughs> nice. So yeah, something else nice. Um, Synaptic Package Manager, so that's what it's using for installing. One thing about something like Synaptic Package Manager is that it uh, not everything works on Raspberry Pi, whereas the Add Remove section and something using something like PyKiss and PyApps, everything will work with the Raspberry Pi, but something like Synaptic, it will often install an x86 program and you'll go to try it and you'll see that it doesn't work. But it's there, uh, and if I want to do, oh, and by the way, the password is Sparky. So let's do a search for Chromium. I quite like the way that this apps, uh, it stays in the background. Uh, you, have to, you have to close it down. I, that's quite handy, well, especially for, for me doing a video showing what it's got on it. So Chromium, let's do this in the background and then I can carry on and do other things. Took a while to get to that point. Chromium 87, I'm sure there was 88 was installed recently on Raspberry Pi OS, but let's put that as mark for installation, uh, mark and apply. I'm using this for a while. Apply. There you go. So that's installing in the background. Can we minimize that? Yeah. So system upgrade has got a massive, <laughs> it's quite funny because it's got this massive tile. I don't know why that is, but it obviously shows up. I guess it may be there sort of promoting that you can upgrade the system uh, without using the terminal. So that's installing the software as well. Uh, so task manager, terminal emulator, file manager we've already seen. Uh, transmission which is um, BitTorrent, actually I used that on my Mac recently and that, that's a good program. And uh, an archiver and then obviously that would launch Firefox uh, and it may launch Chromium in the future. Uh, so through our file manager let's just see what happens if I try and access my NAS drive. I usually try this, so browse network connect. And then if we go down to here, don't know why it always does that on, on lots of things on the Pi where it opens up that window, um, but, uh, but it's fine and you can see it's working. I like the look of the file manager, it's very straightforward, very, very easy to use. So that's enough of that part. If I hit cancel, uh, go down to the bottom here, you can see that my ethernet connection is there and we can get information about Wi-Fi. So sound, uh, there's that, and if you right click, you get preferences, and so I changed it between, uh, or oh, on this top one, HDMI and headphones, and I couldn't get anything out of the headphones. As I say, on Firefox, I haven't tried it. I'll try it in Chromium in a minute, uh, because I think the nine to five article said that they didn't have it with Firefox, so it might just be a Firefox thing. Oh, see, it's got the Sparky Linux written on the side there, look. So you can see the file manager and terminal is here. So let's go back to that synaptic area. So that's all installed. 
and let's close that down. So Synaptic's not responding, so let's do, oh, let's try that. Maybe it was just because it's just installed Chrome. So if we go back to this menu, uh, see if Chromium's on here, which it isn't. So things don't, or, oh no, it is, it's there. Uh, so Chromium's there, but uh, Pi Apps didn't get added to this. It is installed and it is working, but it didn't get added. Right, so Chromium web browser, let's go full screen and go to YouTube, the PSP video HDR. This feels a bit snappier than Optimus Firefox Energy, in this OS. The switch supplier of the year and which recommended provider three years in a row. Still not getting any sound in Chromium uh, through, as I say, it works through HDMI, so um, you can use it through that and a lot of people will use it through that anyway. I had this um, as an alternate audio one. Uh, and if I do uh, F6, I can select headphones, but it still doesn't, still doesn't seem to, to work with it. So let's play a bit of that video. Let's pop it into 1080. And go full screen. The desktop is running at 720, so uh, it's it's having an easier job yet already. You can see it's dropping frames. And again, you get problems on the Pi playing YouTube. Uh, something like H264 if I will help with that. And also um, disabling 60 FPS tends to help as well. So, wow, well, I don't even need stats for notes. I can see that it's dropping almost every frame that's there. So let's close that bit down. And I like the fact that you can right click on the desktop and get these options. Uh, this was something that showed up in MX Linux but with a few more options. There isn't a search bit in here, uh, but I'm sure it's customizable. So file manager, terminal, web browser, and run command is there. But also all the applications are there as well. And this is how you can launch Pi Apps because it doesn't show up in that other list. Uh, so you can see Pi Apps is there. And let's try installing uh, Commander Pi into this. See if that works. Commander Pi plus. Okay, so that's all finished. Just installing. Yeah, so that says it's installed. Haven't got Pi Apps or Commander Pi on the desktop, which they would be, um, but let's have a look for them oh, using the file manager, using this uh, launcher here. So desktop, yeah, so they're, they're both there. So let's launch Commander Pi. Oh, looks like Commander Pi might not be working then, unless it's behind there. Is this an error message? No. Yeah, so Commander Pi doesn't launch on this, although Pi Apps does. This is definitely a thing, and this is where I go back to Twister OS, Raspberry Pi OS, and also MX Linux, all based on Raspberry Pi OS. So compatibility is really strong with things like Pi Apps, Pi Kiss, uh, and also the Adremu software everything tends to work as opposed to something like uh, the package manager on this where not everything's going to work because lots of things are meant for desktop processors, not ARM processors. Oh, what's going on here? Oh, look, <laughs> Commander Pi has a presence here. Why is, why does it look like that? Let's just cancel that. Let's close that down. So it has added Commander Pi to that, but still not Pi apps. And there's also not a way, as far as I know, yeah, if you start typing, it doesn't search for the app, uh, which would be nice to have. I really like that on systems. Raspberry Pi OS hasn't got that either, where you can start typing, it'll show you the apps that are available. So Commander Pi, if I double click that, let's see if that launches. Takes me to the desktop. No, so one of the things that doesn't work, so less compatibility than some of the others. Okay, so always nice to see another operating system. There's certainly some bits about this I really like, um, and uh, <laughs> I don't know why that Commander Pi is massive. But uh, yeah, there's definitely some of the things in there to make things more straightforward for configuring and various things like that are very impressive. And thanks, always thanks for letting me know about new operating systems. Uh, it's always interesting to try on the Pi. So thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.